Hello everybody, E here. Welcome back to another Stephen King review. If you're confused and wondering, hey, didn't he already review all these books? No, I have not. I have done Thursday Theorist episodes, but I have not done the reviews for the majority of his work. So today, we are talking about The Eyes of the Dragon by Stephen King. Of course. So this is a fantasy novel, standalone fantasy novel, even though it has a flag and it has some other connections to the Dark Tower universe, which we won't be talking about today because this isn't a Thursday Theorist video. Um, if you don't know, my Thursday Theorist video is where I go through every single one of King's books and tie them back into the Dark Tower or to the Stephen King universe in general, but mostly all of them tie into the Dark Tower in what some way, shape, or form. Uh, this this story, I do not remember a whole lot about it. In fact, I had to uh, talk to my friend Josh about certain things. Um, I do not have any want or need to ever read this again. I probably will if I go back and do another full read through of Stephen King's catalog from the earliest to the to the mo to the newest, um, which I do about every five to seven years or so. I'll go through his entire catalog. In 2015, um, I did it and. And I did every single one of his books, even his new releases that year, in a year. Um, I blogged about it. I'm not sure if it's still up or not. But if you want to go to wordpress.edwardlorne.com, you might be able to find it. I called it a king for a year. And then I did each uh, decade as a... I, it, anyways, but uh, I did all the reviews every decade talking about how he releases certain books. Um, there's always a thousand page novel every every ten years, every seven years, roughly about that. There's always a short story collection and a novella collection. I found it interesting. If I can find it on uh, online, I will link you guys down there in the doobly-doo. But this book, I don't have too much to say about it, which is why uh, I'm talking about other things. But there's two things that I remember specifically about this book. Uh, one of them is is the escape, um, how he uses the napkins. Um, and then another thing is what I'm going to focus on here in this review, because King says in the forward, or at the beginning of the book, that he didn't, he, he wrote this one for his daughter Naomi, um, and he didn't want to talk down to her. So he wanted to write an adult fantasy novel for, uh, basically a young adult before the term was even coined, young adult. Uh, the problem with that is, and uh, I know I'm going to get some backlash here because YA stuff does have sex and so on, but uh, it's this feels more like a middle grade book, so it kind of feels like he's writing down. But in the very first chapter, Stephen King goes full Dean Koontz and talks about someone squirting some seed, uh, which was very odd, especially right up front at the beginning of the book. I believe it's the King uh, squirting his seed into his wife. Uh, ba back in the day, it used to be, a seed used to be a, uh, just the just the normal nomenclature for uh, for for semen, and it's really weird going back and reading these older books and seeing it just everywhere, just seed just spattered all over the place. And if it's with Dean Koontz, it's usually within the velvety interiors of someone's vagina. Anyways, uh, so I, I didn't care too much for this one, but then again, you know, I, I don't care too much for fantasy, period. I like his Dark Tower series, except for two books, um, and we'll get to those when I review those. I'm planning on rereading them all um, in order you know, before I actually get to those reviews. So if you're wondering where the Gunslinger review is at, um, where the, the Drawing of the Three review is at, they're coming, okay? Um, it won't be until the end of this, and then I'll do the Thursday Theorist for those books. Um, but yeah, this, this one feels like a middle grade more than a YA book. Um, it truly feels like King is writing down, and had he not pointed that out at the beginning of the book, I might not have noticed. I don't know, I can't unread something that I've already read. Um, this, I, I'm, I'm trying so, so hard to try and remember literally anything else about this book. Uh, my, my buddy Josh said, uh, the, he liked all the parts with, uh, seeing through the actual eyes of the dragon, all that stuff. Um, I vaguely, vaguely remember that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to read the description to you guys and see if I can think, see if I can, if it, you know, strikes any memories that pop up in my head. So, a tale of archetypical, archetypal, 
heroes and weep and sweeping adventures of dragons and princes and evil wizards as only Stephen King can tell it. This is probably the less the least Stephen King book I've ever read, so that's whatever. The passage through the castle is dim, sensed by few and walked by only one. Flag knows the way well. In 400 years he has walked it many times in many guises. But now the passage serves its true purpose. Through the spy hole it conceals the court magician observes King Roland, uh, not not Roland Deschain, it's not the same Roland, old, weak, yet still a king. Roland's time is nearly over, though, and young Prince Peter, tall and handsome, the measure of a king in all ways, stands to inherit the realm. I do remember that Flag is a wizard, and you know he's trying to usurp the throne, so on and so forth. Uh, yet a tiny mouse is enough to bring him down. I don't remember the mouse at all. It's very uh, Green Mile. I wonder if I, I wonder if I could tie that back to the Dark Tower that way. Hmm. I don't know. Uh, let's talk about it down there in the doobly doo. Uh, a mouse that changes upon a grain of dragon sand behind Peter's shelves. Chances upon a grain of dragon sand behind Peter's shelves and dies crying tears of fire and belching gray smoke. A mouse that dies as King Roland does. Flag saw it all and smiled, for now Prince Thomas, a young boy easily swayed to Flag's own purposes, would rule the kingdom. But Thomas has a secret that has turned his days into nightmares and his nights into prayed for oblivion. The last bastion of hope lies at the top of the needle, the royal prison where Peter plans a daring escape using napkins. I remember that much. Writing with the wit and power that have enthralled millions, Stephen King has taken the classic fairy tale form and transformed it into a masterpiece of fiction that will captivate readers of all ages. I disagree. Um, everyone I talk to that actually likes this book, they like it because they read it as a, as you know a younger person, as a kid. Uh, so I would, I guess, my question today is also some gorgeous artwork in here. I guess my question today is, did you read this as an adult and enjoy it? I would love to hear from you. Um, yeah, this story is for my great friend Ben Straub, which I believe is uh, Peter Straub's son, and for my daughter Naomi King. Like I said, he wrote it for her. Um, let's see here. Uh, I'm trying to find the exact line where he uh, where he spreads his seed, but I'm, I'm not I'm not good at skimming. Anyways, but it was just a very odd thing in the very first chapter for a middle grade why whatever book, especially back then for him to be talking about you know copulation. I thought that was odd. And then the rest of the book is written in a very uh, fairy tale manner. It's it's it feels dumbed down for Stephen King, which again is confusing because he said he didn't want to write dumbed down uh, for Naomi, um, and I'm a, I'm a firm believer in not writing down to kids, uh, but especially young adult books seem to go. But but then again, you know nowadays we have the TLD. T TLDR uh, crowd, the too long didn't read crowd. So maybe it's better that uh, the language is more simplistic in YA and middle grade. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts down there in the doobly doo. Also, let me know whether or not you uh, loved, hated, felt meh about Eyes of the, the Eyes of the Dragon by Stephen King. Uh, let me know all that down there in the doobly doo. But give me detail as to why you felt that way, so that we can have a discussion. But until next time, I have been E. You've been you. This has been another Stephen King review. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.